Hi, good evening, uh, everyone. Today we have uh, Dr. Chiranjeevi with us to chat, and uh, he is rank one of INASS for AML rank. Hi, Chiranjeevi. Uh, hi, 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 Vijay sir. Hi to everyone, and uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, it's it's a great privilege and honor to be here. And one which <laughs> was, which is a dream actually come true. So glad to be here. So just give me a small introduction about yourself. Where was your MBA and MD all from? So, okay. So I have been in Delhi for the past 10 years now. Uh, I joined MBBS in uh, VMMC and Subdarjung in 2015. Uh, completed it uh, by end of 2020, the COVID year. And then after a break of uh, eight months, then joined my MDP Datrix through INICT, uh, July 2021 in MDP Datrix. And uh, so it was a delayed batch, delayed batch actually by four months due to COVID. And then uh, completed my MDP Datrix uh, from Ames, New Delhi in September of 2024. And then subsequently, I have been working as a non agad in medical oncology in Ames, Delhi since October to right now. Yeah. Am I audible? There's a lag. Nice. Uh, you were uh, you're audible, actually. I don't know. Is that a problem from my end? Uh, I can hear you fine, sir, actually. I don't know. I think we missed a bit sorry for it and um, just going back you completed your mbbs in 2025 i suppose yes 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 2020 sir then uh, md i joined in uh, september of 2021 and completed my md in september of 2024 so after that i have been as a non doing uh, doing non acad sr ship so why uh, from pediatrics to adult oncology why oncology so, first so uh, so actually i think uh, in mbvs we don't have enough exposure of oncology to actually you know like the, all the dreams are probably of cardiology or neurosurgery or something i guess but uh, uh, the thing is that uh, when i entered into uh, mdp Datrix at aims so the oncology exposure was very significant like we we did have a oncology unit in our department we used to do ed and then used to see all those oncological emergencies the fns acute leukemia hyperleukes uh svcos so which were all doing it and just you know managing them and seeing them through different phases like we had a daycare posting daycare used to procedures administer chemo so so the onco exposure throughout the, my md was pretty significant and it uh, eventually uh, after uh, I don't even know when I started liking it so much. So at the end, when like suppose to the end of my start of my sixth sem, when I was like, what next after MD? So at that point, the answer came to came to me uh, came to me naturally that oncology is what I have to do. So how uh, hard was it to choose from pediatrics to adult oncology? Or were you wanting only adult on or uh, pediatric on than just so, so the thing was that uh, uh, at the end, it was like that oncology was my, I actually found my true love in oncology rather than pediatrics. So even though uh, I like, like pediatrics is, is uh, like in names, it's a, it's a very good course and we uh, get exposed to all the specialities in the, in my MD, but oncology was what was my, you know, like was my love during MD also. I was like, I got the thrill during, doing it. And uh, pediatric oncology is a lot more hematolymphoid, so solids are still a bit less. So hematolymphoid, I like, I li really like doing them. And uh, then subsequently, when I decided uh, what to do in DM, then it was a mix of say uh, the circumstances as well as 
we did not have pediatric oncology seats coming in the next two sessions at Ames. That was one of the factors. And then uh, the overall uh, and medical oncology in Ames has a very good, uh, like we do see a lot of kids in IRCH as well as at NCI uh, Jajjar. So we do see a lot of kids. So it was basically, I was not leaving pediatrics behind. I was just adding the adult part. So right now uh, in uh, Ames Medical Oncology, we have a very uh, wide exposure. We treat uh, everyone from kids to uh, geriatrics. So I think it's a very comprehensive course and someone like me who loves oncology so much, I think it's, I get exposed to everything. So it's a great course for me. That is the advantage of being in Ames and uh, getting back to Ames because it uh, uh, as pediatricians we are still having the uh, the soft corner for pediatrics as well and uh, if that is not going out of us in terms of feeds on also being included in your course it feels so good yes sir, definitely and pediatrics actually adds on to your uh, dose calculations and so i know in pediatrics you would have been so minutely calculating everything just that is going to be carried on to your oncology as well. So you will actually do well with <laughs> the other counterparts yeah. in terms of um, all uh, those calculations. Being so meticulous and yeah. uh, finding out everything, we are uh, trying to find out the smallest of mistakes because we have been trying to see the smalls. And uh, uh, that is how we are able to kind of uh, uh, fulfill all the uh, necessities of a patient in a holistic manner. Uh, yes, sir, definitely. You know, like uh, we do have a, a habit of like, like in my MD, like we do take the weight b before every, uh, ev admission everything. So right, right now also when a patient comes for say cycle two or three of HIDAC, I'll say, wait, wait, I'll not copy paste the last cycle. I'll do a new weight and chart. So that's a habit which I have carried forward into my uh, SRC. That process. has kind of got inculcated in your uh, uh, training extra. Yes, yeah. And it, it actually, actually, you know, the patients lose so much weight throughout chemo, so that sometimes we'll be administering 10, 20 percent more if we keep doing giving at the baseline weight. So it's actually a good. That's very, very important it. because the protein loss and the muscle loss during the course yeah. because of the less intake is so much impacting mm -hmm. on the outcomes and the quality of life that every time trying to uh, uh, kind of not to overlook all these uh, smaller mm -hmm. things is very, very important. And I know my, this specialty is not um, organ specific or system specific. You are going to do yes. your pediatrics back on your medicine as a whole, just adding on yes, another sir. specialty of oncology, right? From your uh, neurocardia yes. and yes, everything, sir. whichever is possible. I think uh, yes, uh, doing chemotherapy is half the part and managing all these patients right from their, uh, all your medical aspects, every other possible uh, complications to be managed. Mm -hmm. That gives a huge uh, kind of satisfaction that you are still clinging on to your uh, uh, clinical stuff as well. Uh, sir, yes, sir. that's like just adding on to what you said that uh, in that sense, medical oncology is a very novel branch that because we don't leave any of the systems behind, like uh, even if you do anything else, it's like you are just focusing on one. So we do have patients who presents our chemo patients, say on Doxo, Trastuzumab coming with heart failures. We do have CNS involvement of our leukemias, brain meds. So all the neuro parts, raised ICP parts get. So we have to be good at everything. So that is a very it thing and we don't leave anything behind. That's very, very li rightly put, sir. So how did actually uh, Dr. Dills come into this uh, uh, sequence of preparation? Before that, uh, how hard is to it is to prepare or how easy that was made from a pediatric end to an adult oncology? Uh, Your tips for the upcoming pediatricians? So who are fearing uh, to take medical oncology. Okay, so sir, uh, one thing which I think plays in favor of um, pediatricians going, going to medical oncology is that uh, medical oncology is a different branch in itself. It's not just an extension of, say, a system of medicine. So probably uh, it's a different thing altogether. And uh, I think, uh, uh, like I may be wrong, but like, so in PEDS, we had a decent exposure of pediatric oncology. I think as medicine uh, MDs, even in AIMS or in any other top institute, the exposure to solids, malignancies is pretty less. So I feel like that uh, how much new or how much a challenge it was for me to read adult malignancies. Similar was for uh, medicine people also to, you know, to get 
to know the solids and non hematolymphoid things and a lot of Very because true. all the oncological medonco and hemat and everyone takes the hematolymphoid out of medicine so maybe medicine people also would have studied the hematolymphoid only for say 2 or 3 months of rotation so i in that sense i feel like medical oncology gives you uh, the benefit that you uh, if you are passionate about the subject be it you be a, as a pediatrician background or a medicine background both will actually go on to uh, both will actually be at a very similar level uh, very if we so uh, you are 50, basically starting the race at the same line yeah yeah so the, the only thing is that 30 questions in suppose uh, like just pertaining to iniss the 30 questions of medicine that is a challenge for uh, for maybe for peds but i feel like that's uh, the the kind of questions that are asked are not pure medicine so they are actually a, they combine some uh, some basic sciences some micro some path some uh, some a lot of system, things which we read in mbbs also so in that sense but but yes the the 30 questions preparing for that is a challenge and uh, more importantly in the last 6 months when i uh uh like uh, after my last attempt uh, because i did pretty bad in the general medicine part in my last attempt in november so i genuinely focused on these 30 questions and i actually had a pretty had a lot of corrects this time in, the, in those so that is uh, definitely uh, if you are targeting ini and in like uh, likewise in uh, neat ss the entire 150 questions are onco so uh, then also uh, so med peds uh, pediatrician do not have any problem in neat ss also because now the medicine it has become a different group from the medicine uh, uh, the medicine uh, core branch so so it's a very good branch for pediatricians to consider but uh, be prepared but you should be prepared to treat adults and to uh, to be okay with them because a lot of my say my batch mates or people who i uh, like i have been uh, in my md 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 they were very specific they don't want to treat adults which is fine so but if you say if you have an interest in oncology but then you should be uh, because see, our patients get sick a lot and you will have to manage uh, a lot of complications you have to manage a lot of comorbidities in our elderly patients with cancers so you should be prepared for all that so if you are then then it's a very good branch it uh, it is a bit extra work especially for iniss compared to neat ss but uh, it's doable it's not uh, it's not like that you can't do it so so the uh, take home point is it is doable that is what yeah definitely yeah. yeah so how did actually uh, doctor dreams come into this uh, preparation and uh, what all uh, did you kind of benefit out of it so uh, so basically when i actually uh, you know like i started to when i and i made up my mind it was at start of my 6th sem of md that okay i'll do medonco my like i after celebration of 6 months and i naturally was like how to start preparation so i asked a couple of my seniors who were doing uh, like who like who were currently say first second sems in medonco in aims already so i talked to them so out of all that the doctor doria's name actually emerged as at right at the top that this is the one you should uh the videos are pretty good the you you should make make notes out of them so actually after 3 years <laughs> like in md we don't make notes so uh so when i started watching the videos i made, started making notes so they were so i actually got the hang of it and it was pretty it was pretty uh, um, pretty engaging the notes the classes were not were very brisk and uh, to the point and very very high yield so i make i made notes of all of that and then subsequently uh, so i would have maybe uh, then in between my md exams came then post md i was uh, that post md period also so i took my time completed the first uh, like first writing of notes and first uh, uh, seeing videos in say about 7 8 months so then by 8 9th month i had my all the notes all the videos uh, translated into notes then after that i started revising and uh, then in my second in like in the past 6 7 months i used those notes as my base and then uh, i of course added on to them uh, i think because i was actually working in an oncology setting so we had our classes we had our discussion on rounds we had some uh, things we had like updates asco and asco asco coming best of asco best of smo so it, updates kept coming but i used the notes as my base so i kept on adding on to them 
So that was a big thing that uh, by the end. So you will have to prepare, have your notes. Follow the uh, videos, take notes out of it. Be also being um, uh, updated about the newer drugs, the new trials. Not that you have to remember everything, but trying to follow all this will help you in uh, a, a kind of uh, you having some uh, knowledge about all these new developments and drugs. And also it stimulates you to read more and to get a knowledge in depth. It's basically a stimulus that uh, the, all these new updates, your Twitter, everything, use a kind of a small sense of awe that a new drug giving a, give a bigger number than the old drug. So far you have been seeing uh, numbers of 24 months. Suddenly some drug combination comes in posts up to 50 months. We are happy to have a patient whom we are going to just push through another uh, two years. All these are very fascinating for us. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Actually, like that's the I think the half of my interest in oncology that the every six months, every one year, you have some some changing trials, some practice changing trials. So that's so good and so exciting time to be in. And like sir said, ki Twitter now like like now called X is a very good source. You should actually uh, for oncology uh, if you follow all the if you follow the key opinion leaders of you know like who are you know actually making guidelines, you can follow them. They are actually who, the ones who are conducting the trials, which will, which gets all the practice changing things. So you can start follow them and be up to date. And actually, uh, like in this paper, we did see a lot of um, like a, a, a bit of uh, updates and um, things. So they they actually had a part that uh, along with practical experience, the updates thing was also pretty significant in this paper. So you should all and. It's it's how what you will be doing for the rest of your life also. So better start of six months early. Right, good to hear from you, Chiranjeev. Uh, uh, we are very happy to have you uh, being a part of Doctor Tutorials and securing the rank one. It feels good for us to uh, from a student now you are a colleague. All the best for your future and keep connected to us. Thank you. Sure, sure, sir, sure, sure. It was great talking thank to you, you and uh, okay, thank you. So do a lockout. <laughs>